All right, well, we're almost. It's December the 1st, and apart from a bit of urgency around Three Waters and a few other issues next uh, couple of weeks in Parliament, um, the political year is almost over, and we go away on our holidays, and we come back next year in an election year. And they can be bumpy. Oh, we do have the Hamilton by-election to get out of the way. But the question is, what sort of election is it going to be? I think it's going to be a weird one. Coming off a strange election last time, which delivered what was meant to be impossible, a single-party majority under MMP. But we do have an awful lot of politics going on next year. And I was drawn to an interesting article by a, an old Tusker, an old campaigner, our mate Richard Preble, former Labor Party minister, former ACT MP and uh, ACT leader. And Richard Preble was musing uh, in his article that maybe Labor doesn't have much to campaign on. Um, does that mean National's got a lot to campaign on or not? We're joined now by Richard Preble. Prebs, good morning to you. How are you? I'm well, and good morning to you and your, and your listeners. Yeah. Richard... Um, <laughs> First up, look, just in general terms, this government seems to be sensitive to the idea that it is losing popularity. It's U-turning, it's backpedalling, it's, it's slowing a few things down and, and thinking again on a number of issues. It is, a, is it a government in trouble as we head into an election year? Oh, no, I think it's um, far worse than that. It's a, it's a government that's terminal and they know it. Uh, you can criticise the Labor ministers for a whole lot of things, but but not for their ability to read polls. Uh, the Labor Party actually has the best polling in New Zealand, always has had, mm. and they're reading them, and those polls are very, very grim, right across the board, including for their number one asset, uh, Jacinda. Yeah. Uh, while Labor staunch um, supporters... Uh, still love her. Um, the rest of the country actually have uh, gone off her too. So, uh, you know, I mean, they are in trouble. There's, okay. always, there's, there's always miracles, but yeah. No, 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 but no, also, no. there's a good election campaign. There's a good strategy that can work wonders uh, in no, politics. No, not when you're in there. Such a <laughs> there's one reality that happens when you're in government, and mm. that is you have to run on your record. You, you, you can't run on someone else's record, you have to run on their record. And the point I made in the article is, OK, last election, what was their record? They could say, look, we successfully locked down the country. Now, I might say, how hard was that? But they did. Yeah. Um, and, and they got re rewarded for it. Uh, then they went and overdid it. Um, but if you just say to yourself, hey, what's Labor's great achievement in this term? Um, in my case, nothing comes to mind. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Normally, a, an incumbent government can try and campaign on its record of achievement, can't it? That's right. Well, it's got to. And if it hasn't got any, it's a... It's oh, a, they're going to say a we're problem. a more diverse... We're a more diverse country under Labor. We're more caring and sharing. Um, we've sorted out the, the waters thing. We've been kinder to Maori. <laughs> We've given effect to the Treaty of Waitangi. Isn't that a wonderful thing? More well, people are speaking to Rayo. Isn't that something to campaign on, Richard? <laughs> well, well, I say good good luck with that. Um, we got transvestites. We got we got cross dressers reading kids kids stories in libraries. Isn't that a great thing to campaign on? <laughs> well, <coughs> I just say good good. Um, Good luck with that. But it, one of the great problems you have, even with that argument, is, is that in every election, it's the economy, yeah. and so they're going to be. They've got. To, they can't uh, run away from that. We've got inflation at a thirty-year high. Uh, we have the Reserve Bank governor now that he's been reappointed. He's suddenly become bold, and saying what he's been saying indirectly now directly. Yeah. That the government's reckless spending is contributing to inflation and he's saying he's going to keep on cranking up interest rates until uh, he's got inflation under control. He's predicting a recession. I mean, a recession in election year, uh, that, that, that's, that's a nightmare mm. uh, for a government. And I might say, 
If we start feeling sorry for the government, the, the Reserve Bank governor pumped up the economy before the last election. He was putting out a billion dollars a week. Mm. Uh, people forget that the Reserve Bank actually said to the government before the last election, we're not prepared to do this unless you give us a government guarantee. Mm. And I, I said at the time, hey, if it's too, da- if it's too dangerous for the Reserve Bank to be printing money, it's too dangerous for the country. However, it's calmer. Now the Reserve Bank is pulling back that money and it's helping defeat the government. But the prediction that I was making in my article is that uh, these ministers aren't going to change. They're going to go on spending right up to the election, even though they know it causes inflation, because they're going to regard that as the next government's problem. Yeah. Uh, and they're borrowing the money, and they're going to say, well, that's some other future government's uh, problem. Your problem, yeah. 